So this first room looked like it was mainly war memorabilia or maritime stuff. I always check compasses because about half the time, it seems, they're doped with radium. These ones don't appear to be, but sometimes the numbers and the sighting posts are doped with radium to help them be more visible at night. This compass actually does have radium in the sighting post, and that was to make it more high vis when using this instrument at night, because those points would actually glow a dim green and allow people to use this instrument at night. And since radium is pretty radioactive, just the tiniest little bit will show up quite easily. Those two dots, that's where the radium is, and then the front sight post too. This orange plate looked like it might have been radioactive, but it wasn't. There was a lot of stuff like this where it came from a certain time period and had that orange look, which would make you think radioactive if you've been doing this long enough. But not everything that's orange is radioactive. This craft, though, turned out to be radioactive. You just never know until you check. That's why it's always handy to have a Geiger counter. The tag said this was a Catalina piece. Again, I have to check everything that looks like it might be radioactive. And even sometimes there are things in there that don't look like they should be radioactive, and they are. So it's always good to check. Yeah, there's always a couple of duds in an antique shop where you think it might be radioactive, but it isn't. And on upstairs, this is a pretty big antique mall. It had two stories, which made it kind of fun. So in this other room, I spotted a Bauer teapot. These teapots are kind of rare. I don't find too many of them and they're actually fairly radioactive. This one was giving me about 15,000 counts per minute. Normal background is about 35 counts per minute. So it's quite a bit more radioactive than just background radiation. All these plates at this dinner table were made of uranium glass. And so these are usually only a little bit radioactive. They're not too terribly hot. Here's another craft, and this one also said that it was a Catalina of pottery. And as you can see, it's much more radioactive than that other teapot was. It's in the 40,000s instead of the 15,000 counts per minute. And this is probably due to them using more uranium in the glaze, making it more radioactive. This is the other antique shop that was right around the corner from the other one. So this is kind of cool. You got kind of a two for one if you visit this area. I kind of like the layout of this one a little bit better. I like it when it's a little bit more jam packed full of stuff and you can kind of see everything instead of it being more staged like the other one is. So this is more my, this is more my style of antique shop than the other one. This one was a pretty cool one.
So as soon as I saw the color of this bowl, I had kind of had a feeling that it was radioactive and it had those rings on the side of it, which makes me think that it was a Bauer ceramic. But it didn't have the markings on the bottom, so it's kind of hard to tell for sure. It was decently radioactive at 25,000 counts per minute. Always try to put stuff back very carefully. If I probably could have checked all those camera lenses in there. I'm sure I would have found some that have thorium in the glass, making them radioactive. But I didn't feel like having someone go and open that case up just to check. I saw all of these, I was thinking, wow, there's gotta be something in there radioactive, but there wasn't anything. All of these Fiesta Ware style plates, and some were probably actually Fiesta Ware, weren't made in that time period where they used uranium. There were a couple of these tiki cups that I thought might be radioactive, but none of them were. And another pile of Fiesta Ware. But this time, I actually did find something that was radioactive. There was a couple plates in these stacks that were radioactive. And you would only really know if you had a Geiger counter. So in this whole stack of Fiesta Ware plates, there was only a couple that were radioactive. Now I just had to isolate it down and check the one radioactive plate in that stack. I'm not really talking in this video because there's a lot of music playing in this antique mall, which makes it hard to talk over. Let's leave this up front, you. Sure. Sometimes I find little radioactive cups like this. I'm not sure what exactly these were used for. Maybe for cream. If, uh, one of them there looks like it's for cream. And these were different colors, not the normal orange that you would think of as being radioactive. These were more of a pink or peach color. And they looked like they were both Bauer, both the plate and that boat. But I didn't pull that boat out and check it more detailed like I did this plate. Yep, Bauer, Los Angeles. Kind of a cool uranium glass pitcher. Now these bowls look like they would have been radioactive, but they weren't. And neither was this one or that one. There was a bunch of duds in this section right here where they had the right color, but none of them are radioactive. These plates were given a pretty good read. And I can tell that some of these were Pacific pottery plates because of the rings on the top of them. This one's a California pottery. These ones are pretty cool too, but it wasn't really what I was looking for. And 
last plate was giving me 25,000 counts per minute. Now these plates are pretty cool. These are Pacific Pottery, and you can tell from the rings on the top and that it says Pacific Pottery on the back. But these are glazed using natural uranium and not depleted uranium. And I know this because of the time period in which these plates were made. Pacific Pottery stopped making these plates right when the government put an end to pottery places using uranium. And they did this because of the war effort. So I know that these plates have uranium-238 and uranium-235 in them. I think so. All right, so that was a look at some of the Palm Springs antique stores. There's the Antiques Gallery and then the Antiques Mall was I just came from. Both really cool places. Some really cool little pieces. Glad I got what I got. Well, that's gonna do it for the Palm Springs area for antique malls for right now. I know there's tons of other antique malls around here that I haven't uh, explored yet. And maybe someday I will, but uh, right now I have other stuff I have to do. So I hope you enjoy this video. See you next time.